Messina, New York. Probably the heaviest weight tournament you'll see in Major League Fishing history. It's gonna be a lot of fish caught. They're heavy and they're big. They're all over the place. We get out there and throw them Livingston jerk baits, them Yamamoto swim baits, and shad shaped worms. We'll see you out here on the water. God bless. We are just finishing up the tournament here at the St. Lawrence River Stage Five Bass Pro Tour. Our tournament was out of Messina, which is all the way at the very bottom of the of the river, right at the dam. So you really have to run up toward Lake Ontario to get uh, into more numbers of fish. I think there's more fish, more numbers, and big bigger fish. You know, further you go toward Lake Ontario, that's where all our guys in the tournament caught hundreds of pounds of bass all that way. They'd have a lot more flats, a lot more islands, and I think just the more numbers of fish in those areas. Let me give you some little tips on coming up here to the St. Lawrence River and how I practice and how I look for fish here and just kind of what I did and what might help you to kind of cut to the chase a little bit. I caught jerk bait fish and I caught shad shaped worm drop shot fish. That's my two baits. I, I stayed pretty shallow because a lot of fish were spawning. I caught most of my fish actually on beds. Oh, he's thick feeling. And this Livingston jerk bait, I'm telling you, it's the best uh, smallmouth jerk bait I think on the market. It's easy to cast in the wind because it's got a weight transfer system. It's called a 121C, and it's got the shad sound in it. And I actually caught a five pound, three ounce one this morning, and I watched him. I watched him eat it. It was on a bed, and I let it. I jerked it, and it followed it, followed. I let it fall on its face, and as it was falling down on its bed, it just attacked it. And I'd already fished for it with other, several other baits, and couldn't make it bite, and it eat that jerk bait because of that sound right there in its face. So you can cover a lot of water with a jerk bait. Throw it around boulders, flats. My Lorance C map shows you the big points and bars, and visibly you can see them in the clear water when the sun's shining. That's a big key. Look for the sun shining on those areas, and jerk bait around the big boulders and stuff and three to six feet of water that's kind of the the key for me 121 Livingston baby Woo. well I cover a lot of water with that then the other bait that I caught most of my fish on anytime I slow down and lay the jerk bait down or if a fish follows a jerk bait and doesn't get it that little Yamamoto shad shaped worm green pumpkin that little bait is smallmouth candy right there they will eat that anywhere you go and anywhere there's smallmouth bass they'll eat this bait as good as anything out there on a drop shot little Daiichi one all drop shot hook uh, that'll be coming out at ICAST actually it's a Pro X Daiichi drop shot hook and it's a real stiff hook so it doesn't bend on you you can catch big ones on it throw it on Daiwa 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader on the 15 pound Daiwa uh, J Bray Grand I found three ounces, baby, off the bed. Can't beat that. And uh, on my Randy Howell signature seven foot three drop shot rod, it's a great setup for that. And throwing my jerk bait on my jerk bait, dial tattoo jerk bait rod. I decided to go shallow this week. It was pretty obvious because it's spawning time. You know, when I got here, uh, right here at the end of June, it the water temperature was 62, 63 degrees when I put the boat in the water on practice Wednesday morning, and I knew when I saw that 62 to 64 degree water, the fish had to be spawning, so they had to be shallow. And as soon as I got up on the first flat with some big boulders, wind wasn't blowing too bad. I mean, I started they started chasing my jerk bait, eating my jerk bait, having my hooks cut off. Uh, that and a little swim bait both, and they were just chasing it everywhere, and I could see that they were on bed, so I stayed with that pattern the whole time. When you get in these really bad wind situations, especially on a river like St. Lawrence River, the current is so strong already without the wind. Then the wind blows 30, 35 miles an hour with the current. It sped the current up. It's no telling how fast the water was running today, and that Lawrence Ghost trolling motor's got over 120 pounds of thrust. 
and I could actually hold myself in it and actually pull forward in that current and still make cast of those rocks and that was a big key having good equipment so I've got the best equipment I don't have any excuses uh, when it comes to equipment because I've got the Triton the Mercury and all the Lorant stuff and everything works great so Found two ounces, baby. How we do it? So that's the two baits. If I can have two baits to come to the St. Lawrence River, two techniques, it would be the jerk bait and be the shad shake worm on the drop shot. And remember, if you're gonna fish in the river toward Messina and Waddington, you're not gonna catch as many fish as you will if you run more toward the lake from what I've learned. And you can still catch some big ones here, but you don't catch the numbers. So hope you help hope it helps you guys you start breaking down this system if you have a tournament here if you come up here to fun fish uh, I think anytime late June through uh, mid late July is the key time to come here so I look forward to coming back next tournament will be Lake Champlain it'll be another smallmouth uh, big water big water place but it also has a lot of big largemouth I've done well on Champlain a couple times with largemouth so that'll be the ticket when I get there to figuring out which one's going to be the one to do. And it's hard to figure that out sometimes in two days of practice, but we'll have to figure it out when we get there. So looking forward to that. Hope this helps you. Good luck. God bless. We'll see you at the next one.